Okay, in this video we want to keep talking about groups with a new family of examples known as permutation groups. So, um, for the definition, let's say we have an arbitrary set x and we can define s sub x to be all functions from x to x such that f is a bijection. So recall that that means that this function is one to one and onto. In other words, it's an injection and a surjection. And we want to prove this first claim, which says that Sx forms a group whose operation is given by composition of functions. And just like as a note, this is called the permutation group of the set X. So let's prove this claim first. And so maybe the first thing that we need to do is show associativity. But actually, associativity is clear because um, the, the associativity of composition of functions is like a well-known fact. So in other words, for f, g, and h in this set x, f composed with g composed with h of x is just f of g of h of x, which is the same thing as f composed with g, and then that composed with h of x. Great. But now, now, now notice that we can just read this part and this part, and since this statement is true for all x, those two functions are the same. Okay, great. So now uh, the next thing we want to show is that there is an identity, and so if we set maybe iota from x to x given by iota x equals x, then this is clearly the identity function. Notice that we have this composed with f equals f, and this is for all f in our set x, and the composition goes the other way as well. So there's not much to check there either. And now what about inverses? And so inverses are also um, pretty clear. And uh, recall from maybe a previous course in like a discrete math or intro to proofs or something, um, given a function f from x to x, it's a bijection if and only if it has an inverse. So in fact, having an inverse is the same thing as being a bijection. So what that tells us is that there exists an f inverse, and if a function is a bijection, then its inverse is also a bijection, and this is in s sub x as needed. So we have associativity, we have an identity, and we have um, inverses. So we've shown that this um, is in fact a group. Okay, so I'll clean up the board and I'll show you that um, by proving this in this very general way, we can actually get several examples of groups out of this. Okay, so the example we really want to look at is what if x equals the set 1, 2, up to n. So it's the set of um, the numbers 1 to n, or sometimes we call this the permutation group on n symbols or on n letters. And often in this case, we say, we say s sub x is s sub n because this is like a, such a common way to think about it. So let's do a sub-example sub here where we set n equal to 3 maybe and see if we can write down all of the elements of S3. So S3. So um, maybe the notation we'll start off using, which is not the notation that we use um, forever, is the following. So the identity is going to be given by the function that sends 1 to 1, 2 to 2, and 3 to 3. So there we go. We have one element of that, that set, it doesn't do anything to the numbers one to three. And then maybe we could have another function, and I won't name this other function, but maybe it sends one to two, two to three, and then three back to two. Great. And now notice, if we have this function, then we also have to have its inverse, and we can get, sorry, three goes to one. 
And we can get its inverse by just reversing the arrows. So that's going to give us a function that goes 1 to 3, um, 2 to 1, and 3 to 2. Great. So this would be another element of S3. Good, and so we'll actually have three more, and we can see them as uh, follows. So we could have one that sends one to two, and then two back to one, and then fixes three. And we could similarly have one that fixes one and fixes two in the same way. So let's write that down. So let's say maybe we fix one, and we swap two and three. And then maybe we could fix two and swap one and three. Okay, so there we have six elements. And they can all be written in this, in this way where we explicitly say what these functions do to the numbers one, two, and three. Okay, so I'm going to clean up the board and then we'll write this group in another way and talk about a simple way to compose um, these functions together. Okay, so now that we've looked at the elements of S3 one at a time, I want to talk about a little bit more efficient of a notation for writing these things down. And this is called cycle notation. So let's consider this function right here, which takes one to two, two to three, and three back to one. So we could write that in cycle notation as follows. So we open a parentheses, and then we're gonna start with the number one, and then we'll look at our function, and to the right of one, we will uh, say what where one gets sent under this function. So this is two. Great. And then next, we'll go to two, and we'll see where does two get sent. It gets sent to three. So we'll write a three right here. And then finally, we'll notice that three gets sent back to one, which is the beginning of this cycle, which means we would close this up. So this is the cycle version of this permutation. So, but you still think of this like a function. So if you were to apply this cycle onto, for example, the number two, you would say, okay, well, what happens to two? Two is sent to three under this cycle, so your output would be three. And furthermore, if you were to take this cycle and apply it to three, you would say, okay, well, where does three get sent to this cycle? Oh, well, that loops back to one, so it gets sent to one. Great. So this contains all the information from uh, this guy right here. And you might say, well, okay, well, how can we find the inverse? So let's write down the inverse. So recall that is going to be given by one being sent to three by reversing this arrow, and then two gets sent to uh, one, and then finally three gets sent to two. So notice we, stay, we start the same thing, we open up our cycle, we see that one gets sent to three, and that gets sent to two under this action. Um, but now we can do the same kind of thing. So if we have one, three, two, if we stick three into this cycle, notice that we get two as the output, just reading it the same way that we had done before. But notice that there's a quicker way to get this, and that is just by instead of reading this from left to right, we read it from right to left. So one would loop back to three, and then three would loop back to two, so you can also calculate the inverse that way. Okay, so let's do another example real quick. Let's say, what if we have this permutation that sends one to two, two to one, and then fixes three. How would we write that down? So we would do the same thing. We would open this up and put the number one as a start, and you'd say, okay, well, where is one sent? One is sent to two under this action. Two is sent back to one, so we close it up. And then you would open a new one and write the first number, which doesn't appear here, which in this case is three. But then you would notice that three gets sent to itself, which closes this up. But then, since 
3 is being fixed, we generally don't write it as part of the cycle notation. And so we would just write this as 1, 2, or sorry, 1, 2, and uh, the understanding is that 3 is fixed in this case. And uh, I've noticed that maybe there's a little bit tricky or a little bit confusing of notation here. These are being evaluated by the function. They're not part of the cycle, so you just have to be careful about that as well. Okay, so let's maybe look at uh, one more. So let's say we have one goes to itself, two to three, and three back to two. So in this case, there's no sense uh, for um, writing one going anywhere because notice it's fixed. So all we really need to do is write the cycle three two, and that captures everything. Sorry, two, three, and that captures everything. And notice what we see here is that one is fixed by this cycle. Now, the next thing you might say is, well, what happens to the identity? Um, because we always said if something is fixed, you wouldn't include it at all. And there are um, two main things that you can do in this case. You can either write uh, parentheses with a one in it, and that's usually how I do it to say that this is the identity, it's fixing everything, just kind of breaking the rule that um, we use for larger cycles. Or another thing that you can do is put a pair of empty parentheses, and that means the same thing. Okay, so now I want to erase the board and then do some calculations on um, composing these cycles with each other. Okay, so now that we've talked about cycle notation for the symmetric group on N letters or the permutation group, SN, um, we want to do some calculations with composing cycles. So let's remember that these are functions, so we want to work from right to left just as you would as your composing functions. So the first thing that we want to do is compose this cycle 1, 3, 5, 2, and this cycle 2, 4, 3. And now notice this could be happening within S5 or larger, just depending on um, whatever. So uh, the first thing that I like to do is start with the number one, although you can start with any number that's present, but generally I like to start with the smallest one. And so then you wanna look at how does one pass through this composition. So I like to start by putting a one here and then passing it through each cycle from right to left. So notice one is fixed by the first cycle, so it goes to one, and then through the second cycle it is sent to three, so cumulatively it is sent to the number three. And now we'll move on to three, and so notice if we start with three here, three is sent to two under this first cycle, and then under the second cycle, it is sent back to 1. And what that tells us is that 3 is sent back to 1. We don't write another 1 here. We just close the parentheses and recall that that means that 3 gets sent back to 1. Now we open up a new set of parentheses and we put the second smallest number, which is 2, and we work on that. So notice if we start with 2, 2 is sent to 4 under the rightmost cycle, and then 4 is sent to itself. So that means in the end, 2 is sent to 4. And no, now we go down to 4, and notice that uh, if we have 4, 4 is sent to 3, under this first cycle, and then three is sent to five under this second cycle. So we would write two, four, five. And then notice we've seen all numbers that are present, so we could actually close this off, um, but we might as well just go ahead and check that five is sent back to two, and it will, I won't write this down. So five is sent to itself through this cycle, and then five is sent to two under this cycle, so five is sent back to two, which tells us we close this up. Great, so composing these two elements of S5, we would get that element of S5. And notice, these are written um, with disjoint cycles. In other words, these don't share any numbers, and you can do that with any element of Sn. Okay, now uh, let's go ahead and look at this one. So, we'll do it the same way as we did before. So we start with one. So one passing through the first cycle gets sent to six. But then 6 passing through the second cycle stays the same. So we have 1 is sent to 6. 
Now next, we have six passing through the first cycle is sent to four, and then four is sent to two under the second cycle because it loops around. So we have six goes to two. And now next, we could have two. Notice that two is sent to itself under the first cycle, and then under the second cycle, two gets sent to nine. So that tells us that two is sent to nine in the end. Now let's go on and uh, move on to nine. So let's say here, nine is sent to itself under the first cycle, and then nine is sent to seven under the leftmost cycle. So we have a seven. Great. And now let's uh, check seven. So we have seven here. Notice that seven is sent to itself. And then finally, seven is sent to four. So that gives us a four. And now we can check that four is going to be sent to one and then one to itself. So that means we can close this up. And every number that's on the left-hand side of this equation is on the right-hand side of this equation. So this actually turns into a single cycle, one, six, two, nine, seven, four. Okay, and just recall that this represents the permutation that sends 1 to 6, 6 to 2, 2 to 9, 9 to 7, and so on and so forth. This is just a shortened way of doing that. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is find the inverse of this 4 cycle, and that's pretty easy. All we have to do is read this in reverse. So I still like to start with one and then reading in reverse that loops me back to five and then two and then three. Great. And now let's go ahead and check that this is the inverse. So one, three, two, five uh, with one, five, two, three. Good. So I'm not going to have room to check everything, but let's just check a couple of numbers. So notice that 1 is going to be sent to 5 in the first, and that's sent to 1 in the second one. So what that tells us is that 1 is sent to itself, and then the same thing will happen to 2. 2 is sent to 3, 3 back to 2, and so on and so forth. So these are inverses. Okay, great. This is a good spot to end the video.